Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is shop tips number 762 entitled Demagnetizing with a Sun Growler. Now you may have watched video 761 where I showed you how to check an armature with a growler for shorts and opens and grounds. Hope you watched that. Now I'll put the link in the description. And that's the purpose of a growler, doing this. But it can also be used for demagnetizing. And really now I'm just playing. But So let's uh, see how that works. And then I've got some other methods here of demagnetizing. And of course I've made videos on that before. Specifically, number 181, how to make a demagnetizer by Tubal Cain. So check that out. I'll put that link in the description as well. Let's get to work. Now a growler is meant for intermittent use, so it will overheat, and in this case there's an overload protector, but if I just turned it on now and left it on for, let's say, five minutes, it would trip that overload, or burn it out if you didn't have one of those. So I am not going to use this, instead I'm pushing it on, and you cannot see it, but I am stepping on a momentary switch. There's this tremendously strong magnetic field created in this V-way here as evidenced by putting an armature in there, turning it on, and it's very difficult for me to rotate it. Again, the machine growls, hence the name. There's a tremendously strong magnetic field and I can feel it when I hold a bar in there. And when I put a little cup full of uh, steel chips in there, they will appear to almost boil. Watch this, I think that's neat. Sometimes your tools become magnetized and you do not want them magnetized. Other times, like with a screwdriver, it might be handy, but then again, you do not always want it to be magnetic, and you can see right now that it is magnetic. So, passing the uh, screwdriver through the coil without even touching it will demagnetize it. Watch. See how simple that is? And we can remagnetize it if we would want to by putting it on and The magnetism magically returns. Okay, here's a bar magnet, and I picked up some fuzz, some whiskers there. Let's demagnetize it. Now I'm contaminating my V here, so in order to eliminate that, I think I'll put this cardboard down there, and I'm just going to pass this through real quickly, and it should drop the fuzz. I'm going to call it fuzz. Just a little bit of residual magnetism still left on. Does it seem ridiculous that I would be demagnetizing a magnet? Let me do it again and see if I can get it a little cleaner. See, that pretty much did it. These are a dime a dozen. I had a whole box of them that came from a school auction. Here's another type of demagnetizer. You've seen me use it constantly, and this is much easier to use on screwdrivers or things like that. In fact, this is a jeweler's demagnetizer meant to demagnetize watches, and I don't mean quartz. Most of them have a momentary switch, as I just explained, and this is no different. So let's put that through it. And like magic, it's demagnetized. Now this is the poor man's demagnetizer, made in Germany. And you demagnetize it through this hole, and you magnetize it through this hole. So we would call these pass-through magnetizers or demagnetizers. Let me tell you a little story, if you can take it. 
Oh, and here's another one. I couldn't find it. It got buried there. This is for, this is a poor man's and this is for either, for destitute men. So that's really a cheapie, but uh, maybe it works. I don't know if I ever even tried it. But anyway, when I worked at Caterpillar Fuel Systems, I was working in the department where we made these little uh, sleeves is what they were called. They're hardened steel and they're ground very precision on the face and on the uh, inside and on the outside just to very tight tolerances. This one is uh, scrap. You can see where it didn't clean up there so anyway this is scrap but uh, we made thousands of these millions actually and they would become magnetized by the grinders but there were many operations so when they were moved from one machine to the other they had to be demagnetized and an entire basket of them, much bigger than what you see here, would be passed through a demagnetizer. Let me show you a picture of a similar one, but not exactly the same. Relatively large, large enough to where Henry could have crawled through it. Okay, this is similar to the one that was at Caterpillar, and you would slide the whole basket through, and there was a switch on it that was a timer and it would come on for about five seconds, enough time for you to pass through there. But I wore my wristwatch one time as I shoved the basket of parts through there, and I was unaware, but it spun the time backwards, the hands backwards. So later when I thought it was time to go home, it was much earlier because the watch was now wrong. So I had to make sure I took my watch off when I used that and you could just feel the energy if you would grab a bar of steel and, and stick it inside there just like oh it would hum with tremendous power. It was a ten thousand dollar machine. And why did you demagnetize these you're asking? Because then they went into a second machine. I did the OD. They went into an, a second machine where the ID was ground and there was a feeding magazine and if they were magnetic, they would jam or they would not slide and zigzag and all that. So they had to be demagnetized. Now this is a shop demagnetizer. I'm not sure if I ever showed it to you. Made by Ideal Industries in Sycamore, Illinois, where they have that wonderful steam show that I go to. It's about 60 miles from here. Again, a momentary switch. So I have it taped on and it is foot operated for the purpose of this demo. Again, let's watch some, oh, I'm running out. Let's watch, uh, let's boil some. So this is pretty strong as well, and would be used in any shop to demagnetize uh, drill bits or, or tools that had picked up magnetism. Let's, let's try it on that screwdriver. Okay, the William screwdriver is magnetic. I know like. So, let's do this. Totally not magnetic. And remagnetize. So you have to pass it through the field real fast. To demagnetize. Pretty neat, huh? I think you know that there's other ways of demagnetizing. For instance, using your soldering gun like this. Pass something between there. But you can take this and bend it into a different shape, a bigger loop. Or just take a piece of 10 gauge or 8 gauge wire and make a loop. Take this out, of course. And you would have yourself a demagnetizer. That's common knowledge, I think. Well, I had made a demagnetizer out of an old motor in TIPS 181 that I just mentioned, and it sat around, and I demonstrated it, and but I never actually did use it after the demonstration, so I was kicking that thing around, and I finally threw it away, but you can take any old motor like this. Again, this is the one that was on that Craftsman compressor that burned out on me, so the starting coils are burned out, but that doesn't matter. The running windings are still good, so this could be wired <coughs> directly <coughs> to the 
to 110 and I, I'd have to figure out which wires because two of the wires would go to the starting winding and two would go to the running winding and this makes a great uh, demagnetizer but it's big and clunky and heavy and just how often do you really need it but you can make one out of any AC small motor for nothing really can you take a short story I know you're sick of hearing me gab but I became interested in magnetism when I was four years old now when I was young we never went out to a restaurant that that's 1948 or 49 that I'm telling about but I think it was when my mother was in the hospital you know they kept the woman seven days back then not overnight sometimes they send you right home but uh, so, and my dad didn't cook, but he did take us to a little cafe one evening, you know, and I think we had a hamburger, and I was amazed watching the man work the, the grill and scraping the grease, you know, little kids are mesmerized by things like that, and a neon light was right behind us, and dad said, don't touch that, we're standing up on the booth, you know, you'll get a shock, and uh, it said Harmony Cafe, that's where the Peru Pizza House is, for you people that are in the Illinois Valley. It burned down eventually. The grease was probably 60 feet deep. But anyway, to entertain us, and Dad never bought his toys, he bought a little, tiny little box and it had those Scotty dogs in it that had magnetic base on them. One was black and one was white, and of course my brother and I were fighting right away about who got one, but Dad demonstrated, you know, with a piece of paper and some fuzz like this, you know, and the uh, attraction and the repulsion of the, and ever since then I was uh, intrigued by magnetism and I still am you know every one of your homes have 50 motors and yeah 50 motors so does your car and everything revolves around magnetism and when you think about it the electric cars that they're going to be coming out with will all be driving at them I'll be dead but you guys are going to be driving electric cars in 12 years and uh, that's all magnetism, isn't it, with the electric motors? All right, enough with that gabbing. Let me uh, sum up and tell you what I'm going to do next. Can you take just a little bit of related information? Iron and steel, of course, are magnetic materials. However, if you take them up to 1400 degrees, and on this color chart here where the pointer is pointing, once it is that color, it loses its magnetism. However, as it cools off, it regains the magnetism. That is the ability to be attracted by a magnet. I think you know that there are really only about three metals that are magnetic. Iron and steel, well it's the same thing. Nickel and a cobalt. And of course when we turn this on, this is steel. This is nickel. This is pure nickel used for plating. It is attracted by, but not as strongly, as uh, the steel. Okay, why am I telling you that? Because in the next video I will be talking about paramagnetic metals or materials, and there's quite a few of them. They will not be attracted by the magnet so much as, but they are affected by it. I think that's very interesting, so I'll be covering a lot of different metals, and again using the growler as my centerpiece for demonstrating. Do you like this kind of thing? Did you stick with me and watch it? Because I think it's fascinating, although maybe it's a little more scientific than what it is uh, just plain metal working, but that concludes this video, and I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for just a few still pictures. Coming soon to my What Is It series, 25 Unknown Items.